What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. We're here in the actual showroom. Many will remember this is where I took delivery of the F12 at Marshall Goldman, the Mecca, and we're back today. I pretty much almost have this whole place to myself, and we're gonna do some walking around and supercar shopping today. Because we all know it's time for a new car. It's not gonna be the absolutely gorgeous Maserati Gran Turismo. The coupes are just, I mean, I love these cars. They look fantastic, but that's not what we're getting. We're not getting an old Bentley either, another Maserati here, but they have so much to look at. If you guys have watched my videos from here before, you know this is a huge candy store, just awesome cars. Got a Macan here, we got a Bentayga, a G-Wagon of course, beautiful Aston Martin, but here's the E36 M3. That was in a previous video as well and th this thing is just so cool to me because when i started getting into cars heavily like in the 90s the e36 m3 was like the car the e30 was you know its predecessor and that's really cool as well but this at least where i was from in sweden was kind of what put m cars really on the map for me i just love this thing it is beautiful Let's see if it's open it is open look at that Arthur told me last time, this is a one owner car. Look at this leather interior. It is in really, really good condition. Obviously a manual. Good condition for, I don't know what year it is. It's probably like a 95. So this is a 26 year old car that looks this good. I, man, this car is so cool. Even the side mirrors, because I remember thinking these were coolest design of a side mirror I've ever seen. They are still cool. Look at that, the little things, the side mirrors. Even the driver's seat is in really good condition. So an M enthusiast, if you see this in this video and this is what you're looking for, one owner E36 M3. Stock wheels are in really good condition as well. I even think the wheels still look good. So over here seems to be like SUV row. We got an X6, we got GLE 63 here, we got an SQ5 and you know, another Porsche. We got really cool Wrangler here. And here we get into some interesting things. This is a BMW Z8. These things are legendary. We got an AMG GTS. And here we got the family version of my old car the f12 this is a ferrari ff it's got the same engine it's slightly detuned so it has 691 horsepower if i'm not mistaken f12 will have 731 in stock format out of the 6.3 liter v12 so we take a look in here not my favorite interior it's a typical you know rosso corsa and then the beige interiors resell red and resell but uh, this one has like a screen in the middle with the same transmission um, and it has a back seat so it is really cool and you know it's a v12 so you straight pipe this thing and it sounds just like my f12 did would it be different enough to buy an ff and have on the channel um, i mean i can't i can't i can't say that ff is what i'm looking for right now but they are really really cool look at that we got another e36 m3 this is a convertible version in yellow, also in pristine condition. Look at this. I don't know the history of this, if you know how many owners and the mileage and so on, but this car is nice. And we've seen this Gallardo previously in videos. I love this color. Gallardo, the most sold Lamborghini model ever. Bit too old for me to buy though. You know, maybe I should have started with a car like that. <laughs> I went straight to like my super duper uh, dream supercar in the F12. I love those cars though. Remember I had Will Motivation in Skyardo for about three weeks. He just lent it to me. Love that car. Here we have a Ferrari 599 SA Aperta. So Aperta means no roof. It's a convertible version. And I love these seats. Got carbon in the seats. So this 599 is the predecessor to the F12. So also a V12 Ferrari. We got the Lamborghini Urus and Verde Mantis pearl probably my favorite lamborghini color of all time and this has to be the coolest suv that you can buy 
I, I just love the spec with the wheels and the color. This is most likely locked. No, look at that. Oof. Look at this interior with the green contrast stitching. Oh my God. I've never been in a Urus. This is nice. Very nice. Not the type of supercar or super SUV for that matter that I'm looking for though. Now I'm not looking for a Rolls Royce either. This is the Ghost, I think, drop top. This is a drop top Phantom. And just look at the size of this thing. Yes, I have a wide angle lens on the camera, but the, the car hardly even fits in that. This thing is huge. It's ginormous. Look at this interior. And this is a ultra luxury. And my clutch uh, managed to uh, trigger the alarm. All right, they turned it off. <laughs> what I was gonna show you guys is, look at those air vent controls. They look like air vent controls from a 1980s Volvo. I think that's really cool. That's so different with an ultra luxury car. But uh, enough about Rolls Royces, cause I'm not even looking at buying something like this. I'm just walking around just staring. Cause again, it's a candy store here. Boom. Here is the R8. <sighs> It, it, this color along with all the carbon does not do justice on video. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. I love this car. You have carbon right here, carbon right there, carbon there, carbon spoiler. Probably can't see that, but there's carbon in the engine bay as well. This has really dark tints. It's gotta be like 5% or something. You got the 20 inch wheel option. This is the solar orange color. Carbon in the interior, carbon around the air vents, carbon in the mid console. You have carbon sill plates, carbon around the instrument cluster. No carbon on the steering wheel, which is okay. You can upgrade that yourself. Carbon here as well. It's a 2018, it's got the um, virtual cockpit. And I, I mean, I, I, I love this car. And I know some of you guys are gonna be like, oh, you had a Ferrari, don't get an Audi. And I can get it, but this thing is so nice. It's got the 5.2 liter V10, 605 horsepower, I think it is, all wheel drive. And it just, it looks so good in this color. I also had people tell me like, just wrap the Ferrari orange, if you really like orange. And it's not about like, just liking orange. An F12 doesn't look good in orange. This Audi looks phenomenal in orange. Very clean front too. It doesn't have the Audi logo up front. I know it's a sun shining in here, it's bad lighting, but God, this thing is gorgeous. I haven't made up my mind yet though, because, we haven't even made it halfway. But man, that thing looks so good. And look at this, we got one of the most legendary Lamborghinis of all time. We got the Countach, look at this thing. I just think it's so amazing that a car from the 80s will still completely blow your mind when you see it. Just look at the design of this thing. Oof, I didn't even notice this. They got Diablo sitting right here in a color I've never seen it in, it's like a brown metallic or a dark burgundy or something holy crap but we gotta focus on this first now if i had all the money in the world and i didn't have to worry about constantly creating content for youtube not worrying but that's what i do this is a car that i would buy in a heartbeat and just be able to enjoy whenever obviously you can't drive them as hard you can't drive them as much as a modern supercar but just look at these air intakes see a fan right there these windows and everything obviously a gated manual this thing is so cool look at the aerodynamics of it it is so low so yes I'm six foot two but this car literally goes up to my hip that's how low it is even the wing is awesome that is sick and then we got the Diablo I'm not, I'm not gonna try to open them and everything, because you never know. I don't wanna set off another alarm. But look at this thing in this color. Hopefully that comes out on video. That is so different. 
and it's just such a classic design. Diablo 6.0, beautiful interior. I mean, it just, it's amazing. And this is a 30 year old car as well. All right, so now we've made it over to another section of the showroom here. We got a C8 sitting here, and this thing is really good looking. I mean, I have to say, Corvette did a fantastic job. You know, the interior looks really, really good, although it's not my, you know, color of choice for interiors, but it's an amazing looking car. But my question to you guys is, is the C8 a supercar? Would you guys consider this a supercar? I mean, and no pun intended, no disrespect, it's still a Chevy. Can a Chevy be a supercar? And I'm not asking if it's a supercar because it's supercar fast, but is it a supercar? I think if Chevy had put doors on this thing that go up, it would have been complete game over. There's so many Italian brands, along with McLaren, that would have lost so many sales if the doors went up on this thing right here. Because it definitely has a supercar look. It's low, it's sleek, you know, the headlights, you know, you can take the roof off. It's like a spider, but it has a Corvette logo. It's not a Ferrari, it's not a Lambo, it's not a McLaren. So leave it in the comments below. Is a C8 Corvette a supercar? And look at this Gran Turismo with the red guts and black. That is actually really, really nice. Like I said, these cars are beautiful, especially with red interior. We got a California sitting over here, and then we got a black on black Bentley where they even blacked out the taillights. I don't know what I think of that, but it's a cool car, it's Continental. And then we have here what I think everyone thinks I should replace an F12 with, and that is the 812 which obviously would be a really cool alternative to an F12, although they're pretty much the same car. New design. We got new uh, taillights. I mean new, this car has been out for a few years now, but it, this is the successor to the F12. Um, the specific one in blue, I mean, it's a beautiful color, but it's not the color I would pick. And it's definitely not the interior I would pick either. Um, I don't know about you guys, but to, in my opinion, an F12 looks better than an A12. And they definitely have a different price range as well. So this is used. And this is, you know, what the market says that these cars cost. $369,000. What was the mileage, by the way? $2,300. You got 6.5 liter V12 instead of a 6.3 in the F12. So this has 790 horsepower, I think it is, stock. Absolute monster but it's not something I can afford. And even if I had that money, I don't like, it wouldn't feel different enough to just upgrade to an F812 from an F12, it just wouldn't. This on the other hand though, 812 GTS. So look at this. This is the convertible version of an 812. Really cool. It looks amazing, but you lose a lot of the trunk space that a GT car should have, like an F12 and A12 has, because obviously it's a drop top. So you lose, uh, yeah, a, lo a lot of storage space, but it looks absolutely amazing. Look at this. Wow. These are rare. You don't see a lot of these out on the road because they're pretty new on the market as well, which, the price will reflect $748,900. Safe to say it's out of my price range. Now, one thing I would consider, this is not one of them, but a Porsche GT3 RS, um, if I could find one in the right, right price range. Although those cars, in my opinion, they are specifically made to be tracked. It's not the type of car that I would buy and start modifying, I mean, you definitely put an exhaust on it because it's one of the best sounding six cylinders in the world, but you don't really start messing around with them, like lower them and that kind of thing because they're, they're made to perfection when it comes to tracking it. You can beat the crap out of it all day long. Again, this is not a GT3 RS, but 
they are so well engineered. So when I get a GT3 RS, because I will have one at some point, I want to start doing more like track content, which would be really cool. That's the reason I would buy a car like that, not to like modify and stuff. All right, so complete 180. We've shown these two cars in a video before, but I, it, I have to mention this again. This has to be the widest tire made for any car ever, like a street tire that is. This is a 405 25 24. I mean, if you're out driving this and you get a flat tire, you can't just tow it to you know, any kind of shop and they'll have these in stock. Not that they would have 335s in stock either, but a 405, this tire is especially made for this car. This is like two Forgiato specially made SEMA cars that they have for sale here. Look at this thing. I mean, the lip on this has to be like a negative 50 offset or something. They, it's a bigger lip than I have on my truck wheels. It's crazy. Here we have a gorgeous Ferrari 430. These things are just stupid loud if you straight pipe them. Obviously not as fast as, you know, like a 458, or definitely not an F12 or a 488 or something like that, as it's not the most modern Ferrari out there, but it's probably one of the best designed Ferraris. It is gorgeous, I love it. Mid engine or rear engine, whatever you prefer to say. But here we are, back at the R8. I don't know exactly what it is about this car. I, I, like I said, I love the color. It's gotta be a combination or whatever, but the, I, this thing is amazing. I love it. And I know, I had an F12 before this. It's not a proper replacement, but I love this car and we can have a lot of fun in it. It's also super chargeable, like the Huracons. So you put 800 horsepower in this thing, which is the same that my F12 had, and it's a lot lighter, and it's all-wheel drive. There's not many cars on the street that can even take on a supercharged 5.2 liter V10, you know, if I were to do that. Because th this thing is also newer, it has a warranty, it's a 2018, only has 5,700 miles on it. And that makes me feel good, that it's a newer car and it has warranty until we start messing with it and it won't have any warranty. When we put an exhaust on that thing, whew, now one car they don't, as I can see from this showroom here at least, have in stock is a 458. But it's the last mid-engine Ferrari that was ever made. If you can get a hold of a 458 in good condition and get it for a good price, that's a car you can drive around for a long time, put miles on it, and not lose a dime. Just because of uh, being the last mid-engine made Ferrari ever. Uh, naturally aspirated, I should say as well. Not the last mid-engine, but the last naturally aspirated mid-engine Ferrari. But before we leave here, which iconic Lamborghini would you guys pick? Is it the Countach? I mean, this is if money is no question whatsoever and you just want something classic and just legendary to drive whenever you want, like on the weekends or whatever, is it the Countach or is it the Lamborghini Diablo, which by the way, is in the color Marone. Marone must mean maroon, like burgundy-ish, brownish <laughs> in Italian. Both these cars are just legendary. I mean, look at them. It's just such a typical supercar look. In 80s, I think early 90s, the Diablo came out. Just legendary. Look at the wing. Man, you gotta put some respect on it. daily this thing is such a beast the OG C63 I mean I sell the F12 and then I get pulled over driving this instead it's weird so when am I getting a new supercar well I was here today because I wanted to see the R8 one more time and see if they got something else 
in inventory that I will be considering for my replacement car. It's not happening today, but it's happening very, very soon. Hopefully, something can be finalized next week because my taxes are finally done. If you guys saw the previous video, I have a new account. He got them done. IRS approved it, all that good stuff. So we're good on that end. I've yet to be funded by uh, the lender who is financing the new owner for the Ferrari. That should happen on Monday. So then I have the money that I need, and then I just gotta pick the right car. And yeah, I, I got some thinking to do. Leave your uh, suggestions in the comments of what you think I should get, which car you like the best inside of Marshall Goldman. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys here very, very soon, man. I got some thinking to do. Love you guys, bye-bye.